Sup, Brewster? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with a little book update. I feel like it's been ages since I've done one of these, probably because I've wisely not been buying as much shit. Uh, although I have picked up sporadically a few things over the past, you know, few weeks, so thought it was time to share. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this mini haul. There's some badass shit here. Uh, okay, so first up, shout out to the homeboy Chris uh, for this one. Actually, for a couple of these, um, I tell myself I'm not going to buy shit, and then this motherfucker will message me like, hey, are you, did you hear about this book? It's like a smack dealer toying with my vulnerabilities. But anyway, uh, this is Wic Wicked Stepmother by Axel Young, and that was the uh, pseudonym for the author's Michael McDowell, uh, the beloved Michael McDowell, and uh, Dennis Schwetz. They collaborated on another book called Blood Rubies, which I have uh, and I've shown in a previous video. Uh, this one looks amazing. Uh, l less horror, I suppose, and more sort of like, you know, like thriller. Like it's uh, clearly about a, a vixen, a woman on the make uh, trying to, you know, get those millions from some poor uh, man's family. And uh, yeah, it looks like a blast. Looks really fun. I uh, heard it's well written, as you know, Michael McDowell's stuff tends to be. So, looking forward uh, to checking it out. All right. Uh, next up, we've got Death Instinct by Philip Emmons. Uh, this uh, Philip Emmons was a pen name for the author Bentley Little, another beloved author. And uh, this book was first published by Signet on July first. Uh, 1992, and um, it's kind of marketed as a sort of uh, violent police procedural, as you know, many uh, horror books and thrillers were in the wake of Silence of the Lambs, a mega success in uh, the early 90s, 91, right or so. So um, yeah, I've heard good things about this one. I uh, love those sneakers on the cover. Uh, yeah, it looks like a blast, so looking forward to uh, to diving into that one. Okay, uh, next up, yet another one. Uh, Chris uh, got me hip to. Here we've got Wizard by Steve Zell. Uh, this book was published by St. Martin's Press, one of my favorite uh, imprints back from back in the day. And it was published on uh, December 15th, 1994. And... Uh, Really, really love that cover. That's amazing. And this one, you'll see, I don't know if you can see that. It's marketed as a young adult uh, sort of like suspense novel. Uh, you know, it's trying to trying to go off the, you know, the, the teen creeps crowd, uh, trying to appeal to them, you know, in the tradition of Christopher Pike. But um, I've heard that it's actually, you know, fairly gnarly. And, you know, this is totally my jam. Supernatural uh, teen adventure horror Love that. Looks really, really cool. It's got a cool little intriguing title. And um, yeah, stoked uh, to check this one out. Uh, maybe try to squeeze this one in this summer. We'll see. Okay, next up, uh, this one is an intriguing little obscur obscurity. Uh, this is Nightlife by Michael Cadnam. And this was also published by St. Martin's Press. Uh, on March, March 1st, 1990. And uh, interestingly, this only got a hardcover release. It never got a paperback until years later. Uh, it was uh, reprinted in 2015 by Open Road Distribution. But this looks uh, really interesting. Uh, there's a photo of Michael Cadnam on the back there. Uh, apparently he is an award-winning poet and this is his foray into um, prose, like, uh, like a novel. And it sounds really intriguing, kind of like an eerie... A kid book and you know being written by a poet uh, I'm sure it's beautifully written and that's always you know a plus with me so um, yeah really cool and another you know obscure St. Martin's Press title uh, happy to have it and, and excited to check it out okay next up we've got a book called Road Kills uh, by Christopher Cook Gilmore and this book was published by Warner Books on uh, April 1st, 1986. And um, this one uh, sounds pretty cool. Uh, basically, the the synopsis is a, a lunatic escapes from a mental asylum and uh, travels across the U.S. 
uh, picking up and, and, and brutally murdering hitchhikers. So, um, yeah, so it's got kind of, I guess, like an episodic feel to it. Um, but yeah, sounds intriguing. Sounds cool. Uh, dig that, dig that image there. So yeah, thought I'd check that out. All right. This next one's kind of interesting. Um, here we have X, the unknown by Sean Hudson. Uh, this was published by hammer, uh, on July 5th, 2012. And yes, that is the hammer you're thinking, uh, hammer studios, the, the famous, uh, British film studio, uh, there was a period in the early uh, 2010s, I guess, when they were uh, hiring writers to write novelizations to their uh, Hammer films. And uh, they reached out to Sean Hudson. He did a couple of these, and Sean Hudson is a huge uh, Hammer uh, film fan, and so he did this one on X the Unknown, which, uh, if you don't know, is uh, about... Uh, quote, a radioactive mud-like creature that terrorizes a Scottish village. And uh, so that sounds really fun. You know, so this th this was basically Hammer's take on the sort of 1950s monster movie that was, uh, you know, so big in the in the States at the time. So, yeah, to, to see Sean Hudson tackle that, uh, you know, I thought would be really interesting. So I uh, decided to pick this one up. Uh, looks pretty cool. Where's the back? All right, now we got a couple of newer titers, uh, titles. I figured since I have lately been diving into sort of newer horror, uh, I got a couple from my boy Shane McKenzie. Uh, first one is Infinity House. This is, I believe, his first published novel. I may be mistaken, but it was put out in uh, 2012 by Gallows Press, uh, which has since gone under, which is why you cannot... Uh, by the uh, ebook edition anymore, which is like definitely the biggest negative ever about ebooks. Um, I keep saying I'm going to do a collection or a um, video one day about sort of like paperbacks versus ebooks. Uh, I mean, one of the, the biggest drawbacks of ebooks is how ephemeral they are. Like, if a, the publisher goes out of business, you ain't getting that ebook. Like, and you will never be able to get it. It's not like you can find it ever. Like, you know, like in a store. Uh, if a publisher goes out, that ebook is vanished for good, and only the people who got it will ever have it. So, uh, so I had to go over the paperback, and, and this one is actually pretty because it's out of print and the publisher is defunct. It can go for some high, mo some some costly money online, but um, I lo luckily I got this one for like twenty bucks. But it uh, this one, yeah, I love Sh uh, Shane McKenzie. You know, I, I did a mini review of his book All You Can Eat uh, recently. I just think he's a great, uh, great kind of like extreme <laughs> writer. Uh, I, I think he writes in a really engaging way, and this one is kind of like his take on the haunted house. Uh, story, but of course, filled with the characteristic Mackenzie, just like putrescence and nastiness. Uh, so awesome. I'll read the, the the back cover of this one for anyone who doesn't know uh, any, anything about it. it says, uh, Mama had always forbade Mike from going to the old house. She said it was pure evil, that the devil lived there. Grandmama did too, back when she could still think straight. Hell, everybody in the poverty and crime-ridden oak knew to stay away from it. But when a drug deal goes bad and Mike is left penniless and desperate, he and his younger brother, James, do the unthinkable. In the dead of night, they sneak onto the unkempt property in search of rumored treasures. Beneath the thick shadow cast by the deserted home, they find what they are looking for. But brothers get greedy. Enticed by the promise of enough riches to get them out of the doomed neighborhood, the pair enters the house and soon discover that the truth can be much worse than legend. Sounds really fun. So it sounds like it's got some uh, people under the stairs vibes uh, with a lot of maggots. <laughs> uh, so yeah, stoked to check this one out. Uh, probably be you know reading this fairly soon in my newer horror book series. Another one by Shane McKenzie that looks freaking dope is Jacked. Uh, this was put out by Severed Press on December twentieth, uh, twenty twelve. And, um, this is, uh, apparently Shane McKenzie's take on like, uh, like a blob type story with these like mutant, like blob like creatures that kind of run amok. And, uh, 
Yeah, it seems really cool. And this one, interestingly, I saw, like, I don't know if this is an oversight. Uh, there's no writing on the spine. I've never seen a book that didn't have, like, the title or the author's name on the spine. Uh, I found that to be interesting. But, uh, yeah, another book that does not have an E edition available, unfortunately. So you can only, there's only the paperback, and it can go for higher prices online. Luckily, I found it for a decent price. But, um, yeah, it's a slim little novella. Looks like it can easily be read in a day. And I'm sure it's, you know, going to be a blast. So, all right. And then uh, one more. Uh, this is not only from Shane McKenzie. Um, this is a collaboration uh, titled Jackpot. Uh, and it's written by um, Shane McKenzie, David Bernstein, uh, Adam Caesar, and Christopher Rufty. And this was published by Sinister Grin Press on September 23rd, 2014. And uh, I believe this was spearheaded by Shane McKenzie. And, you know, he kind of, I guess, got the ball rolling with the initial premise and then handed it off to his buddies and they collaborated on this. And I absolutely love the premise of this book, which is what if a sadistic serial killer won the mega lottery <laughs> and like all the, the shit that would like, uh, you know, happen from there. And uh, I've heard that it's just like totally off the wall and crazy. Um, and, uh, yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, this is another one that I hope to read, uh, fairly soon in my, uh, newer horror books series. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, here's another, uh, very newer horror book. I don't know if I should cover that up. Uh, here we have Don't Fuck With The Coloreds by Andre Duza. And this book is definitely the newest here. Uh, this was put out by uh, Deadite Press on April 15th, 2020. So this just came out. And um, this one sounds really, really interesting. Uh, now the coloreds, I know what you're thinking, but uh, in this case, the coloreds are um, creature, quote, creatures born from animate, animated television who do not follow our rules of reality or morality. And um, I, I, apparently, um, a bunch of cops come into contact with these animated TV creatures and a bunch of hell ensues. So yeah, it sounds, sounds like a blast. Um, I've heard good things about this guy, Andrew Duza. I've heard him be compared to Wrath James White, who is, you know, I think up there with Edward Lee as one of the better, um, sort of extreme horror writers of the current day. So yeah, looking forward, uh, definitely looking forward to, to checking this one out. I'm always interested, you know, in what Dead Eye Press is doing. So, yeah, Just don't fuck with the coloreds. All right, two more here. Uh, this is something a little different for me. Uh, here we have uh, a graphic uh, novel, uh, uh, well, kind of of sorts. This is uh, Tales for a Halloween Night, Volume 1. And um, this is basically a, a horror comic collection edited by John Carpenter, uh, along with Sandy King, I think his wife, uh, and then st also Stephen Hove, what's Stephen um, Hovek or something. I can't read my handwriting. And um, yeah, this uh, is a kind of like an ongoing series. Uh, well, first it was um, it was published by Storm King Productions on uh, November seventeenth. 17th, 2015. So that's interesting. They, they missed Halloween for Tales for a Halloween Night. Um, they couldn't like get it out like a couple weeks earlier, I guess. But yeah, these are, um, yeah, it's like an anthology collection of, as the title says, Tales for a Halloween Night. And um, I hear, I've heard good things about it. I hear that, um, I hear that they do get better. I think this one, the first one is Probably not the best edition, but my OCDness. I want to start at the beginning. There is this sort of um, the the host, if you will, the crypt keeper type person. I really like that animation. Uh, I, I like that animation. I kind of wish the stories kept stuck with that animation because the the actual stories have this more like image style animation, which honestly I'm not as big a fan of. But I do love uh, I love the way that this guy looks. Like too bad they couldn't have gone for that that sort of look for the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. These look fun. They look like just like kind of fun stories that you can just you know read sporadically. There's the, the, he got uh, Carpenter was able to get some good writers to contribute. Like this one has 
Uh, like there's a story written by David J. Scow. Um, and then he himself wrote one. Sandy King wrote one. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I thought it'd be interesting to check it out. I'm not honestly a huge comic person, but you know, it's Carpenter, uh, Halloween type stories. Thought I would at least give it a shot. So see how that goes. And then, all right, the final book, this is the one that I'm kind of like most excited uh, to, to show you guys. I'm a big fan of coffee table books, uh, love coffee table books. And this one I've really been enjoying over the past like week or so, just kind of riffling through it. This is Ad Nauseum. Um, subtitle is Newsprint Nightmares from the 1980s. And this was um, put together by Michael Gingold, uh, a writer and editor uh, for Th Fangoria Magazine. And this is really cool. It's basically, uh, what it is, is it's a collection of newspaper ads for horror films that Mike Gingold collected as a kid, like just cutting them out of the newspaper every week uh, for the whole decade of the 1980s. And um, so, that, I mean, talk about a, like a time machine. I mean, I was like too young for this shit. I don't remember like seeing these in the 80s in newspapers. I mean, these are actually, these come from like, since he's from New York, these are from the New York area. But man, it's amazing. Like it really kind of takes you to that time period. Like just look, look at these ads. Like, uh, okay, it's just Child's Play. And then, you know, they have like specialized ads. Like, you know, uh, Child's Play was playing on Thanksgiving. So here we've got like a Thanksgiving tie-in ad for, for Child's Play. And, and just even seeing all the, the theaters and stuff. Um, okay, there's a uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. And it also includes uh, little snippets of uh, reviews from back in the, the back in the day. And you see how brutal some of the um, how brutal some of these reviewers were, how they hated horror movies in the 80s and just like tore them to pieces. Uh, Siskel and Ebert especially just like maligned these horror movies so much. Look at the blob. I've never seen that ad before. So just like seeing some of the, the ads for my some of my favorite horror flicks is um, really cool. And, and uh, yeah, I'm having a blast just kind of like going through that. Probably one of the better coffee table books uh, I've uh, gotten maybe my favorite one since the VHS video cover art one, which I've showed before. But uh, yeah, super fun. So anyway, guys, that is it. Those are all the books that I have acquired, uh, you know, I guess since the last one. Um, but if you've read any of those books, uh, feel free to drop a comment. Let me know what I'm in for. And uh, thanks for watching. A check back very soon. Maybe tomorrow I should be having my next uh, vintage horror book review uh, done and uploaded. So uh, yeah, till then guys, take it easy. Peace out.